The Koffler Gallery is proud to present the world premiere of a heart-wrenching and fascinating exhibition, The Synagogue at Babinyar, Turning the Nightmares of Evil into a Shared Dream of Good. Opening on the eve of Yom HaShoah, April 17th, and running until November, the multidisciplinary exhibition tells the bittersweet story of the Babinyar Synagogue, which stands on the grounds of the first large-scale massacre of the Holocaust in 1941. Experience the full historical, political, artistic, and spiritual context of this incredible monument for the first time. The exhibition is free of charge. To learn more, visit CofflerArts.org. I am a supporter of free speech. I am completely against hate speech. And so I do believe that Ira's definition of anti-Semitism, while you know, may not be perfect, it is a great step in the right direction. That was Vancouver's mayor, Ken Sim, a couple of months ago when his council was debating whether to adopt the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism, or IRA for short. And it was a long and emotional meeting with delegations of pro-IRA supporters, such as rabbis and Holocaust survivors and expatriate Israelis, telling the councillors they didn't feel safe in Vancouver because of rising anti-Semitism. Then the anti-IRA speakers, including the Union of BC Indian Chiefs and members of the Independent Jewish Voices Group, spoke. They said they fear the IRA definition could be used to stifle debate about Israel's treatment of the Palestinians. I am now going to call the vote. Uh, clerk, could you please take Vancouver us to the Vancouver did eventually and... vote to adopt IRA that night on November 16th. It wasn't unanimous, but in doing so, Vancouver became the only major Canadian city so far to adopt the definition. Now, later today, the government of Newfoundland and Labrador will announce that it is adopting the IRA definition, so that makes it the seventh province with the policy on the books. Last year, all three prairie provinces did it. So did New Brunswick. And before that, Ontario and Quebec did. And the Canadian government started it all back in 2019. So with all this high profile show of support for Jewish communities in Canada and the fight against anti-Semitism and Holocaust distortion, we wondered why the rest of the provinces aren't following suit or the territories, not to mention the biggest cities where most Canadian Jews live, like Toronto and Montreal and even Ottawa. Which is why for Jewish Heritage Month, we're taking a deeper dive today into the state of IRA in Canada. I'm Ellen Besner, and this is what Jewish Canada sounds like for Tuesday, May the 9th, 2023. Welcome to the CJN Daily, a podcast of the Canadian Jewish News, sponsored by Metropia. Sometimes this news business works in strange ways. We had taped an interview with Bel Jarneski. She's one of the Canadian delegates to the IRA International Alliance, which has 35 countries as members and six observers, and she runs the Jewish Heritage Centre in Western Canada in Winnipeg and their Holocaust Museum too. And we decided that we were going to run that interview today just because. Then, literally while we were editing it, we learned that Newfoundland and Labrador is holding its news conference to adopt IRA today. And their media advisory says they're doing so because it fits with their anti-racism strategy and because local Jewish groups asked them to. And they tip their hat to B'nai B'rith for some behind-the-scenes encouragement. Unfortunately, when we recorded that interview, neither Bell nor I were aware of this Newfoundland and Labrador development. But here is our interview. Let's, uh, maybe you can help us sort of summarize some of the major developments that have happened over the last year in terms of who's adopted it in Canada. Well, we've got, we've got six provinces, of course, that have adopted it and um, many municipalities, really too many for me to name, and they, and they keep um, being added. I think the most recent one, uh, as far as a big city, was Vancouver. This is really important uh, as really part of an overall anti-racism strategy, I think, to include um, the IRA definition on anti-Semitism. Unfortunately, all too often these days in discussions of diversity, equity and inclusion, anti-Semitism is left out. And that is not just for civil, at, at municipal levels, it's also in provincial and federal yeah. And on campuses, which we'll get into in a second, but back to cities. We should also mention also Richmond, B.C. was the one that also just adopted. Yes. They don't have British Columbia yet because although there was some talk of British Columbia starting to take racial statistics 
they didn't actually adopt it, even though several Jewish groups, including Sija, made a big deal of thanking the outgoing Premier Horgan for, for adopting Ira, but that actually did not happen. But I, I was wondering if you could say why the other provinces have not yet I can't really uh, know why. I mean, I think that there are people working, various groups working with the provinces, and uh, it helps having someone who lives there working on this. Um, Federations are also very helpful, and I'm not really sure what the situation is with federations in the other provinces. Can you tell us, navigate us, what you did in terms of getting Manitoba to adopt IRA? Well, I worked very closely with federation, and federation had um, has a very good relationship with with the government, and together we encouraged them to adopt the IRA definition, and much to our delight. They decided to go ahead and do that. We had a a nice uh, ceremony at which it was announced. Today, I am honored to share with you the government of Manitoba endorses and adopts the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance definition of anti-Semitism. And uh, the next step, of course, as with all the provinces and municipalities, it's wonderful to adopt the definition. It's important but we need to implement it. And uh, there, I think, is uh, one of the challenges. And by implementation, I mean, how do you use the definition? So um, in Europe, for instance, there is a wonderful publication on how in EU countries it has been implemented, how it's been used. So for instance, can we use this to to train police forces? I know that um, there is someone from Federation who has uh, spoken to the police recruits, the cadets, um, about anti-Semitism and used the IRA definition as as part of his presentation. Um, There are so many uh, different areas, uh, education, et cetera, where we can. I certainly use it um, when I'm doing presentations on anti-Semitism, which has been, interestingly to me, um, requested more often these days than presentations on the Holocaust. And so really, what is anti-Semitism? What is the history of anti-Semitism? And what, how does that look today? What is contemporary anti-Semitism? And there, the IRA definition, I think, is, is very important. Because when we talk about those examples in the definition that speak about Israel, uh, not everyone understands what that means. And unfortunately, it's often mischaracterized as well, you know, even though the definition is very clear that criticism of Israel, similar to criticism of any other country, um, is not anti-Semitic, um, and then gives examples of when it might cross over. I don't think that's always understood. UJA's Walk with Israel is happening this Victoria Day, Monday, May 22nd. Join thousands of community members for the world's largest Israel Solidarity Walk, followed by an epic Israeli-themed beach party to celebrate Israel's 75th birthday. Get all the details by visiting walkwithisrael.com. This is our moment to unite as one strong and proud Jewish community, religious and secular, left and right, Jews and allies. Everyone belongs at the Walk with Israel. Register before May 19th, and if you use the promo code CJN, you can save 10% on all Walk Bundle packages. To register, visit walkwithisrael.com. Now, before we get into some of the criticisms, I know that you've recently had to navigate trying to get it through a body of the city council in Winnipeg. And there was a lot of pushback from organized groups who were um, making delegations. So this was so to be clear, this wasn't city council. This was the Human Rights Committee of City Council. The motion did not to uh, adopt the definition did not come from us. It came from the deputy mayor, Marcus Chambers, who also chairs that Human Rights Committee. And it was seconded by Stuart Murray, who was also a member of the committee and in the early days was the CEO of the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. And we were there to provide information, um, to help explain what the definition was. And uh, there were uh, there were people from uh, Federation. There was me. We had uh, Richard Marceau from Sija zoom in, and we had Erwin Kotler zoom in from Israel. But much to our surprise, there were 13 individuals 
most of them, if not all of them, connected to independent Jewish voices who did presentations, um, who submitted materials, um, some of which I would say I just looked at and thought, what in the world does this have to do with the IRA definition? Just pictures of people. Uh, it looked like they, they might have been in Israel, I don't know, touring or many, many different odd things. Um, the presentations I felt not only mischaracterized, as has happened in other places, the definition itself saying that people have, have lost their jobs because of the IRA definition. No one has ever lost their job because of the IRA definition. It's first of all, as you know, a non-legally binding definition. It is a tool. It's a resource, period. Does it make it difficult for allies, such as the people that you just mentioned, who want to put something forward like this, and then all this stuff happens, and it Very makes difficult. it so maybe not worth their time. They're like, who are these Jewish people that are fighting with each other? Like, I don't know who to listen to. Is it worth it? I, I think it's still important. I think it's interesting to to speak of what happened in Vancouver. In Vancouver, you had a similar situation, except they were presenting to city council. And there were many more people who presented um, opposed to the definition, and yet it was adopted. The mayor really wanted the definition to be adopted, and it went through. And I'm hoping that that's what will happen here, too. It, yes, it's, it's a real problem, because when people are willing, they know that it's not legally binding. They're saying, oh, this is just the first step. It's going to criminalize any any criticism of Israel, they know that's not true. They know that we have laws regarding hate speech. They know that this is a resource to better understand anti-Semitism. And yet they're, you know, willing to say just about anything. I, I honestly don't understand. There were people who also diminished anti-Semitism. There was one person uh, speaking about experiencing anti-Semitism in his, in his childhood, you know, somebody saying something to him, but then saying, is that hate? No, I really don't think it's hate. So there were, you know, so many things that were beside the point. And yes, it, it just, it confused, I'm sure the people on the committee sitting there, uh, other than, you know, the two who proposed it were, were, and there was one Jewish person on the committee as well, I think the rest of them were completely confused and had no idea what was going on. And also the suggestion by these groups that actually they represent a, a major part of a Canadian Jewish community. And we know that's simply not true, but they're very loud and they're there. And often, as you know, the, the loudest voices are heard and they've made a, a career of this, of going across Canada, of, of you know, putting things on their website and... Um, it's, it's very disappointing that we have this problem from within. Canada's had a bunch of successes. There's still lots of challenges, though, for people who are proposing IRA. And I just need to say, I'm the CJ and I'm not taking a position one way or the other. There are other definitions that people say are just as valid, you know, the Jerusalem definition, what have you. So I'm not taking a position on it. And now with the disconnect then between all these people that have adopted it, a new report that came out uh, just a couple of weeks ago, which said that anti-Semitic incidents reported, this is the B'nai B'rith audit, is the second highest ever since 41 years, 2,000 and some odd incidents for a country with only, you know, 400,000 Jews. Yeah, like 1% of the population. Right. Do you believe those statistics based on all this goodwill that you're seeing? Oh, I, I certainly do. I see it happening. Um, you know, and incidental uh, stories that get to me, things that happen in schools. I know that it's it's much worse in, in Ontario, for instance. Um, but, you know, 51 incidents uh, is, is 51 incidents. And um, that's in Manitoba. Yeah, and there's some pretty ugly stuff out there. So why is Iris still important if there's so many? Everybody seems to be doing everything they can. Holocaust education, more money for Holocaust museums. You're teaching, you're getting... But we need to reach more people. I mean, it's implementation. It's, it's it, as I said, it's, you know, teaching police forces to be able to identify anti-Semitism. And I'll give you an example. There was a, a park bench uh, in, in this uh, neighborhood that said, uh, Soros wants you dead. I would say that 99% of the Canadian population would not understand that that's anti-Semitic. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even know who Soros is. They might think it's some superhero from a Marvel comic or something. Yeah. 
you know, I'm one person, um, you know, having schools come in or going to their schools, and, and I'm very grateful for that opportunity to educate them on this. But Canada is a big country, and we need, it's, it's important to educate on the Holocaust, of course. It's also important to educate on two things, who Jews are, what Jews are. You know, I mean, I'm sure you heard that um, uh, story that came out of Dallas of a group of students visiting the Holocaust Museum saying, but are there any Jews left alive? People need to know more than, you know, to quote Dara Horn, you know, uh, about dead Jews. Holocaust education, very important for so many reasons, but we also need to teach about anti-Semitism and the IRA definition is very important within that. The United Nations is debating or is about to take take itself uh, into the topic of whether it should adopt the IRA definition and already they received a letter over the Passover um, holidays uh, from a hundred groups, B'Tselem and uh, Amnesty International, some others, including Jewish groups, well, B'Tselem is from Israel, saying that uh, they shouldn't because it would be unfair. And is Ira aware of this, if you can talk about that? I really don't understand why people have a problem with a definition that very clearly uh, delineates and, and says that, you know, you can criticize the policies of Israel it's it's mind boggling. I, I don't understand it. And of course, uh, the form, the rapporteur for the UN, uh, Shahid, spoke, wrote very favorably about the IRA definition. And you spoke uh, briefly about the Jerusalem definition. Um, one of the major issues that I have with it is that it does not um, it does not dismiss BDS as being anti-Semitic. And we know that in most cases, BDS does cross the line. BDS is usually a big thing on campus. And we know in Canada, university and college campuses have been the sort of vanguard now of where the anti-IRA, anti-Semitic, maybe anti-Israel uh, rhetoric is is causing Jewish communities and students to feel very unsafe. Is anybody still trying to get universities and, and clubs and uh, to adopt IRA, or are they kind of going to give it up because it's too fraught? Well, as a matter of fact, the University of Manitoba Student Union did. The Faculty Association is against it, but the Student Union adopted it. There are many countries who have adopted the IRA definition who are simply not friends of Israel. I don't think that anyone could accuse the, could say that the EU, oh yeah, you know, they're just so tight with Israel, but they've adopted it. And many other countries, um, I'm trying to, to think of some offhand, but just who really are so critical of Israel, and yet they've adopted the definition. Yeah, so Erwin Kotler's mandate, uh, as a, he was going to step down in the beginning of 2023, and it seems we're already six months in almost, uh, five months in, and he's still working and hasn't found a replacement. What is the situation with that? Well, we don't. We I we were told that you know the mandate was extended for a few months, and at our last because our delegates uh, meet uh, regularly, that um, there was an expectation that sometime soon we would hear who the new appointment is. But I have not heard anything yet. All of us would just love uh, Professor Kotler to stay on, you know, forever because he's just amazing to work with. <music> And so that's what Jewish Canada sounds like for this episode of the CJN Daily, sponsored by Metropia. Integrity, community, quality, and customer care. Today's listener shout-out goes to Professor Erwin Kotler, Canada's special envoy on preserving Holocaust remembrance and combating anti-Semitism, and he heads Canada's delegation to the IRA Alliance. He turned 83 on Monday. And we'll end with just a note that if you're in Calgary on Thursday, May 11th, I'll be the keynote speaker for Jewish Heritage Month at an event at the Military Museums. They're launching a new display honoring the Jewish soldiers who served in the Devil's Brigade. During the Second World War, these were Canadians and Americans who formed the first special service force. They were so infamous that Germans feared them and called them the Black Devils. There's even a Hollywood movie about these men who scaled snow-covered mountains in Italy, took thousands of German prisoners, and suffered lots of casualties themselves. The link to attend and more details about the talk is in our show notes. So I hope to see you there. 